Hello there, this is Jack and today we are doing something different using color from Purple Carrot to paint something. It was my first time buying Purple Carrot and I can see why it isn't commonly used because the color can get pretty strong. If you boil the carrot with other ingredients long enough, it can dye the other ingredients purple. Maybe bluish grey or something. I tried dyeing other food with purple carrot but I didn't get the exact purple color I wanted except for the pasta. So I was thinking to myself, what am I gonna do with the rest of this purple liquid? Then I was like, hmm, well, I do know a little bit about painting, for fun. So yeah, here I am using the purple watercolor extracted from purple carrots. I feel like using the word extractive might mislead you to think that I've done a tremendous amount of work just to get a color, but no, not really. Basically, you just have to boil the carrot until it gets softened and you'll get the color very soon. If you want to thicken it, I believe you can add a bit of cornstarch water as a thickening agent. I actually used the water from boiling the carrots to cook the pasta, that's how mine got thickened up because the starch from the pasta was released into the water. Once it cooled out, it thickened up a lot more. So you might want to pay attention to the temperature as well. In my case, I added a bit of hot water into the liquid so that it would be more diluted and easier for me to paint. If not, it would be too thick to use. So yeah, let's get to it. I was actually being very random, so I just drew whatever that came to my mind. I do like purple a lot, and when I looked at that purple liquid, there was just a beautiful girl with her hair tied up into a bun. I always think girls with a loose bun hairstyle very charming. So I started to sketch, and obviously it looked horrible in the beginning, and I tried my best to tweak it here and there to get the look that I wanted. What I had in mind was just a really rough figure without any specific look, and I was struggling with the face features. That's why you are now looking at me erasing and drawing it again. Also, thanks to myself for practicing drawing hats for these two or three months. Not every day, but sometimes when I'm free, I just do some sketches for practice purpose. I think this random practice kind of helps me to get familiar with drawing the faces and getting more understanding about the position of the eyes, nose, ears, and mouth. I still good it up when I struggle to get the hair done in this one, but those previous practice kind of make it easier for me to draw the first two. After I got my first two done, I felt like it's kind of empty at the right bottom, so I went ahead and drew a back view. It definitely took me by surprise when I realized how hard it was to draw a back view for a hat. I think the reason why I struggle a lot because I've never really drawn a back view of a hat before, which also means I didn't have any information to retrieve from my memory. Also, I was literally thinking to myself, how hard could it be to draw something that has less details than the front? Then it turned out I was dead wrong. I was planning to draw only one head but ended up with three, because I was thinking it would be nice for me to practice some different angles. After I was done with the sketch, I just dipped my fingers into the liquid and started painting or smearing around the sketches on the paper. I screwed up the first one because I didn't put too much thoughts into the highlights and the shadows. I just went straight in, so the whole face was covered in that purple liquid. After I learned my lesson from my first failure, I moved on to the next one and I started to just color the side first to see how it looked before I continue adding more to it. I really like this one so I didn't want to screw this up and I just stopped there once I thought it looked pretty okay. 
the last one was just there, nothing much to talk about. You might have noticed that I didn't have any proper tools like brushes and all, because as I've mentioned just now, I was just experimenting, and the only thing that I have was the chopstick that I got for my takeout. Well, I needed something to stir my purple watercolor anyway. And I was actually hoping it could help me to paint the details, but apparently it didn't help much. I think my nails are better helpers in this case. At this point, I was quite surprised how it turned out. To be honest, I didn't expect it to be quite nice. Well, I hope you think it's nice too. After I finished painting, I just can't wait for it to dry naturally, so I grab my hair dryer and try to dry it out. The next day when I checked on it, it turned blue or grey. I mean, it kind of makes sense that the color changed because it's cooked water from the food after all. But thank god it doesn't smell. So yeah, hope you have fun watching this real food color painting experiment process. Thanks and feel free to leave a comment below to tell me what you think about it. Bye for now!